This feature is one of the new still experimental features that was first introduced in Next.js 14. And if we take a look at the Next documentation, the definition says that it combines static and dynamic rendering on the same page. Also, in some places, you're going to find it defined as a combination of ISR, incremental static generation, and SSR, server sign rendering. So let's first understand what those mean and how rendering on the pages was different before. Taking the simplest example, we have a HTML code that needs to be rendered on a page. This could totally be a static page that has static rendering, meaning it could be pre-rendered during build time. Why is that? Because we don't need to interact with the server at all. We can just bundle the code when we're building it and ship it to the browser. So these are the key terms to remember when it comes to static site generation, like pre-rendering and the build time. Now enter the data you need to fetch and we add that fetching. For that, we need to interact with the server and that would make our page dynamic, right? Because at the build time, we don't have access to the data and the data could vary based on certain conditions. For example, user information, authentication states, even geolocation maybe if in case you have a localization on your site. So you can't pre-render that, you just render it at the runtime also request time, so when it is requested from the browser. Here we have a list of functions that would make your uh, page dynamic if you include any of those. For example, if you request cookies or if you check the headers, also making a fetch uh, that's not cached, that would also make your page dynamic. Okay, now we have established the differences between static and dynamic page. But what about a page that has both static and dynamic components? Before partial pre-rendering, if a page had at least one dynamic component, that would make the whole page dynamic and still that page would be rendered on a server. Uh, because the render type is determined on the page level. So on the page level, Next.js determines whether or not the page would be rendered uh, statically, so pre-rendered or it would be rendered on a server and dynamically. Um, so that doesn't mean that static components couldn't load first. Uh, for example, if you have a text that doesn't uh, depend on any condition, you're gonna display that text no matter what, that's a static component. And that would load first, then other components that need to fetch the data and other components when the data is fetched and it's available, the dynamic ones, they load after. Uh, but because you have dynamic components on your page, your static components still need to load from the server instead of it being pre-rendered, so loaded before that. Now let's take a look at examples. So I'm here on the landing page, everything here is static and I'm gonna navigate to the dashboard where it's a data specific to user, so like admin data. So if I click here, you're gonna see the loading state and then this got loaded, everything else is um, static. So we had the title of the page, we had this text, but because we need to fetch this data of which forms, for example, user has from the server, we first saw a loading state and then we saw uh, this data and these components get updated. But what you notice here that if I go back and um, there was like a slight delay before this page got loaded and before we saw the static components compared to when I clicked on the page. So I'm gonna uh, go back now and you're gonna see if I hover over that's we see the URL and if I click on it, there's a few seconds until we get to the page. So that's because the static components are also coming from the server and there's a lag. And let's say if this static components were on the page that has also only static components, it would load immediately because it would be pre-rendered. So to prevent that from happening with the new uh, partial pre-rendering model, we're gonna have pages that get partially pre-rendered, meaning that the static components are actually rendered during build time, same way as we would get during like static site generations case. And then we have the rest of them uh, rendered on the server. 
And how do we set the boundary so that static components are already displayed and we don't or we want the rest of the page to be a blank page. So we want to show some kind of a loading state like we saw in the example. And that's where we use a suspense. And now we are going to take a look into how to implement suspense. And we're gonna do it on this project that I showed. Uh, if you're curious about the project, it's the one that I built for AI form builder tutorial on my channel. So there's a video, you can check it out. Uh, and before we implement sub suspense, we are going to dive deeper into what's actually happening on the user dashboard. So as I mentioned, uh, this data and this card components that we're seeing is dynamic data is we're fetching it from the database and to load this specific components filled with that data, we need to wait until we get a response from the API that we're fetching it from. So the function that's calling this is an async function, right? Uh, so in this implementation, I switched to the end. I'm going to show the code as well. So we have a page. Uh, it's a server component. I made it async. That is the function that calls the data. And then inside the page, we have this form list. This one is actually a client component, but not to get confused, this is also getting loaded on the server. Um, so in this one, it's pretty simple. It just takes in the data and displays it using a card. And then I'm trying to like log some web vitals, like just to see the numbers, how long it's taking this components to load. Mm, and uh, yes, so we have that and as you can see there's no suspense here, there's no loading state. So because we don't have any of those, what ends up happening is... So let's open up the console. If I hover over the dashboard, we're going to see on the left we have the URL. So if I click on it, uh, you can see that it took some time to actually get the page. Uh, instead of us seeing like dashboard right away and then the loaded components, there was like some lag. And if you look at the this metric right here, TTFB, uh, which stands for time to the first byte, that measures usually like the latency of the server and it measures like the time from the start of the navigation to the time that we get the first byte on the page. And you can see the rating that it indeed needs improvement. It's measured, the value is 1400 over a little over 1400 right now, and it is measured in uh, milliseconds. Uh, so we can improve that. We can show the rest of the components uh, faster, and we do that by suspense. So let's go back to our uh, page and take a final look at how it's going to be before the suspense. Now I'm going to switch to the branch where I have implemented it and I added just for a comparison one more static component which we wanted to show up right away. So for the suspense I just import that from uh, the React and the component uh, that's loading the data I moved fetching the data function inside the dynamic component because we don't want to delay other parts of the page, for example, this one. Um, and we take that, this skeleton card is just a loading state that gets displayed when the data is loading. So I say fallback, so if data isn't ready here, it's just going to display this. And then the forms is the same thing we had. I just added a little bit delay because it is getting still fetched uh, so that we are um, visually we can see what's happening and let's observe the time so I'm just gonna reload the page we can see the loading here and this one says needs improvement because I added a delay but I'm gonna remove the delay but we can see now that uh, this shows up faster like the static parts and also the text here and let's remove the delay in the forms. Okay. Okay, so now we get this loaded almost immediately. 
uh, we have a good rating and we can also do the actual navigation. So from the landing page to the dashboard, see how that long took. So almost immediately we got a reaction and its value is now 200 and rating is good. So uh, that's what Suspense does. Okay, this is great, but Suspense existed before partial pre-rendering. So that's also the part where I was confused in how is it different. And the answer lies in how the static components are served. Uh, just like right now, uh, they are getting rendered like they would on a static site and that is a more optimized and faster way. So basically suspend functionality that has existed before has just expanded and that's also why they didn't introduce any new APIs for this partial pre-rendering change. Um, and what's happening now is that the dynamic components no longer make the whole page dynamic, no longer we're forced to load the page on the server and the page gets uh, split up and that happens behind the scene. Next.js decides uh, which components to render on the build time versus dynamically. And the difference is that you like you can observe the difference in the times if you check the performance metrics like we did. There were also other changes introduced in Next.js 15. For example, the fetch is no longer cached by uh, default. And if you're curious about all the new and exciting changes, uh, check out my next video.